you know, old time Holy Ghost evangelist that that actually happens. But anyway, getting back to this, I wanted to say this morning that the Bible says that when the Lord comes, okay, every eye will see him. That's the second coming. I'm going to go over here to the thing and because and then we're going to after lunch, we're going to take questions. You guys ask me whatever you want to ask me. But um, let me show you the time frame. How, how many of you know there is a, such a thing as the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord, eh, the day of the Lord is where the Lord is bringing Israel to her very knees and her national repentance. Israel right now, see this is where people take the word and they get it mixed up. Israel right now, where's Israel right now? Okay, she's in a backslidden state. But she's been born again nationally. Okay, let me show you. The nation was born in a day. Nationally, nationally, in the natural. Let me put this up here. In the natural, where is Israel today? She is a nation. So her natural birth has happened. But God said, I will take you, I will bring you through the fire, I will bring two-thirds of you through the fire. And then he tells him in the Old Testament prophet, he said, I'll bring two-thirds of you, you're going to be like gold tried in the fire. He is going to bring Israel to their great and glorious destiny as the head of the nations. He says in Deuteronomy, he says, you shall be the head and not the tail. Nationally, that's her promise. That's not a Christian promise. You should be the head and not the tail. But it's been taught wrong. But nationally, she will be the head of all nations, Isaiah 61 says. Arise and shine and let your light come. And he said, for the knowledge is going to cover the whole earth through the nation of Israel. The whole earth, because he's going to bring her through the fire. And he said that one third of her would be like pure gold and the Old Testament prophets. And remember what I said? They didn't, the Old Testament prophets, none of them saw. They did not see the church age. Because the, the church age, which is from grace, it's a peculiar, beloved bride of Christ. But God said, Israel is his beloved. Romans says that she's, he, she's his beloved. She will always be his beloved. She's the apple of his eye. She's still the apple of his eye. She's the supernatural wonder of existence, actually, through all she's been through. She's been slaves more than any other uh, ethnicity, race, or will ever think of. That nation has been enslaved. That nation was attacked by Syria 175 times in her existence. And right now, we know that Isaiah says, Assyria is the Antichrist. That's his company he comes out of because it says, Isaiah calls him over and over with personal pronoun, the Assyrian. Okay? So how many of you here ever thought, because I was born in the 40s, I was born in 1940, so how many of you ever thought you would be talking about Babylon? And you know, the Bible says, I am the beginning and I am the end. I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. But he goes on and he says, okay, um, Babylon, the land of Shinar. That's, see, I'm going around. I almost didn't preach this because David said, no, you got to say it, even though that other guy said it Sunday morning. Land of Shinar. The whole world's looking at the land of Shinar in the area of the Babylon, ancient Babylon. It's out of that whole area down there. The whole world. In the beginning, Babel, the gate of the gods. That's what Babel means. Babylon, the tower of Babel, the gate of the gods, the false gods. The god of, the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. The Bible says in Corinthians, that he's the God of this world's blinded men's minds, that they should not see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 
right? So as it was in the beginning, okay, we're going to see two main entities. We're we'll see Babylon, Babel, the Tower of Babel, the land of Shinar, and how strange the whole book of Revelation goes back to Babylon the Great. Jesus said, I am the beginning and the end. I'm Alpha and Omega. So we see the land of Shinar. Now God said to Israel, okay, I'm going to, because you've been so wicked and rebellious as a nation, I'm going to let you be blind. You're going to crucify your only Lord and Messiah of glory. But I love you still because of Abraham, because he gripped my soul, says God. This one man has gripped my soul, and I will make a covenant with him. It can never be broken as far as a nation. It's broken with individuals, and God's, the Holy Spirit says the same in Revelation. Okay? So he says the same in Revelation. So here's what happens. They've been naturally brought back, so they're birthed naturally. Now I said, I can't get a hold of your heart. Remember what we talked about earlier? God wants, what does he want from me? He wants your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wants our whole heart, mind, soul, appetite, and even our very emotions. <coughs> so he says, okay, Israel, I have to bring your heart back to me. Your nation's back to me. You're back in the land like I prophesied through all the prophets. I prophesied you come back. I took you and made you slaves in every nation. Mm -hmm. But now I wanted to bring you back. I want to make you the head and not the tail. There's no such thing as the church being the head and not the tail. I'm telling you that right now. So people can say what they want to say, but that's not what the scripture says. Because his beloved is waiting for him. And what happens? Okay, this whole church age, God took out for himself through Jesus Christ. He provided a bride for his son. Okay, that's us. And then he says, okay, it's time. Remember I told you I was going to preach on time for power. It's time for the power. It's time for the power. What? For God to begin to take his mighty love and let the Holy Spirit begin to deal with Israel again. And you know what? That gives you such hope when you think about your kids. We think about our kids. When the heart of Abraham so gripped God and the heart of David gripped God. There's two main men. One basically was a friend of God and didn't fail God. The other one failed him really bad at one time, you know, and fell into sin. But what always gripped God is the heart. That's what grips God about you and me. Give me your heart. You know? When he becomes number one, then you have all those wonderful promises that you uniquely alone get. Because everybody in here, when you draw nigh to God, he said, I'll draw nigh unto you. When you draw near me, I will. I won't, maybe I will draw near unto you. So everybody in here has a promise of the Lord waiting for them. Just let your heart grip God's heart. So anyway, all your emotions, like I just read to you how David was, but he's the big, biggest crybaby, oh my goodness. I, I cried unto you, God, with all my heart, and you heard me for your holy hill, right? So uh, anyway, so here we have it. Now God said, I'm going to bring you through what? The fire. Bringing the nation through the fire. And he said in Micah, it's, I think it's the fourth chapter and the third verse, he said, he said, behold, I will send my messenger Elijah. He'll go before you, so before me. So Elijah, and some people say, well, John the Baptist was Elijah. No, he only came in the spirit of Elijah because the foreknowledge of Almighty Father God knew, hey, they're going to reject him, so... He, they're going to reject his son. They're going to re reject Jesus. So then it says, I'll send you Elijah. I'm going to send you Elijah. Now, a lot of people say, okay, 
What's going to happen here? Well, the very next thing after Revelation 4.1 was, it says a mighty door was opened up into heaven and a voice from heaven proclaimed and said, come up hither. That's the voice. And incidentally now, get this, that is the same exact words and same exact voice that causes, calls the two witnesses. So he said, I'm going to send you Elijah and I'm going to send you some people say Moses, some people want to argue. Enoch, well, it doesn't matter who, he's sending them. <laughs> and Moses. Some people give the argument. See, I let you make up your own mind. But some people say, some people say, well, it's going to be um, the other one, even though he's not named. Elijah's definitely named, so we'll accept that. But is it, is it, is it Enoch? It could be, because Enoch in Jude 14th verse says, he said, the Lord our God shall come, uh, and he said, with thousands of his saints. With ten thousands of his saints, the Lord our God shall come. Jude, the 14th verse, if you want to read, read it. And that was also, uh, for a doctrine to be stable, it has to go back to the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word of God be established. And Zechariah established the word because Zechariah said what? The Lord our God shall come with ten thousands of his saints. And then the other argument from the other side, oh, you're go it's going to be at the end. But I was telling someone, you know why I believe, why I, per can I give you my reasoning on that? Is that um, what, he's not coming at the end because, first of all, you have the 70 weeks of Daniel. And this is the, sev there's 483 years already and there was 490 years decreed, so that's, that's seven years left. And the church age was put in there. Now, this is really important. They go, well, um, 